everyone, this is Jasmine. Welcome to Nature Education with Metro. If you've seen the rest of our videos, you've seen a lot of beauty of the natural world, both in our parks and nature areas, and even in our own backyard. So today, I'm here at one of my favorite trails by my house to talk to you about edible plants. Before we start on our walk, I want to clarify that I have had many years of training and would also check with an expert before consuming any wild plants. Many edible plants have toxic relatives that look a lot like them, so you would make sure you consult an expert before consumption. I also want to state that I'm not a medical doctor and you should check with your doctor before consuming any edible plants or using any of them for medicinal purposes. At the end of the video, I'll give further instructions on how to start your foraging journey. There are so many phenomenal plants all around us. A lot of them you can eat, are good for you, and can even take the place of some of the stuff that you would buy at the grocery store. I'm super excited to show you around today. Let's go! Would you look at that? There's some horse tail! Horsetail isn't a plant that you just pull out of the ground and eat, but it's an extremely versatile plant with lots to offer. The roots can dig as deep as 150 feet. That's why they grow prolifically and are hard to get rid of. A lot of people consider these plants invasive. Horsetail has two main spring offerings for eating. The tan colored fertile shoots that appear early in the season are edible. Later, the green stalks of horsetail appear as a separate plant. These can be used as medicine, but are not really eaten. Horsetail also has another fun use, flute making. Use your clippers or scissors to cut young brown shoots into different sizes. Horsetail has chamber-like sections. For your flute, you want to make sure the top has open airflow and the bottom is closed. Each side will play a different pitch. Look at this beautiful patch of oxalis. This is one of my favorite plants to snack on when I'm on a trail. Oxalis or common wood sorrel. Oxalis means sour and this plant lives up to its name. It tastes just like lemon to me. When eating plants in nature, you want to make sure you ingest small amounts to ensure that you don't upset your stomach. For example, oxalis has high oxalic acid content, which gives the plant its sour flavor. But beware that oxalic acid can be toxic when consumed in large quantities. All parts of wood sorrel are edible, including the leaves, flowers, seed pods, and roots. Look at these heart-shaped leaves! I like to use wood sorrel in salads or just eating it fresh on the trail. You can pick off the leaves, flowers, and immature seed pods to put in salads, but avoid using older, tough stems. Another fun fact about wood sorrel is it also makes a really nice yellow or orange natural dye. We are nearing one of my favorite times of year in the Pacific Northwest, berry season. There are berries emerging all around us. Here we have some salmon berries. They're bright orange in color, but can also be red or yellow. These are in the raspberry family and are super delicious. These are a bit sour, but they still give you that delicious berry flavor. Salmon berries are found in moist forests, stream sides, and shorelines, but they can also be found in disturbed areas. They form large thickets in open areas and they thrive in open spaces. Here we have a thimbleberry bush, and they're still flowers, not yet berries. You can look for thimbleberries in the mountains and places that are shady, moist, and cool. Thimbleberry bushes have these beautiful, broad, soft leaves that can be used to make a pouch for holding the berries that you're carrying or they can also be used as toilet paper. Both of these berries are in the rose family, same as raspberries. They're called rubus fruit. Rubus fruit are composed of small individual droops. Each individual in a droop is called a drooplet. They're essentially many little berries grouped together to make one large berry. Would you look at that? I caught an edible plant. Come on over. This is called a cleaver. You can usually tell it's a cleaver because of its Velcro-like quality. Cleavers have little hook-like hairs on their leaves and stem that make them like Velcro. They stick like this. Cleavers are an annual plant. The leaves and stems can be used as a leaf vegetable, although it's very sticky so it doesn't blend well in salad. They also can be sauteed or juice. It's said that the fruits of cleavers can be collected and dried and then roasted to use for as a coffee substitute. I've never done it, but it sounds pretty cool. 
Leaves and stems can be dried and used for tea. Miner's lettuce is a small, herbaceous, and slightly succulent plant. Miner's lettuce is light green and has round, disc-like leaves. After the plant has bloomed, there's a small, white or pinkish color flower growing at the top. Flowers, leaves, and roots are edible. Young leaves can be consumed raw or cooked. Older leaves can turn bitter, especially in the summer, and if the plant is growing in a hot or dry location, I like to toss my flowers in salad or decorate baked goods with them. They're super delicious. Look over here, this tree has licorice fern. Licorice fern is an amazing plant. It grows primarily in wet forests where it's especially common on the trunks of big leaf maples and alders. It grows on logs, rock faces, and wet, mossy ground. It's a primary producer for other inhabitants within the ecosystem, including insects, birds, and other animals. Harvesting licorice fern can sometimes be tricky because you're harvesting the root of the plant. So you follow along the bottom of the stem until you can feel the woody root, and then you gently pull away from the mossy structure that it's attached to. I then clean the dirt and debris off with a knife or my fingernail. I like to enjoy licorice root by sucking on it fresh, or drying the root for tea, or making a syrup or infusion. Wow, so many wonderful edible plants, and we just skimmed the surface. Here are a few more reminders before you start on your own foraging journey. Before you start your own journey, I want to mention that a lot of parks and natural areas have had restrictions in place that prohibit people from harvesting plants and other foods unless they have a special use permit. Make sure that before you plan on harvesting somewhere that you have these clearances and you have field guides or other identification tools. Also make sure you're foraging responsibly and sustainably. Only take what you need. We want to make sure that we aren't disturbing ecosystems and we're leaving food for animals that rely on these plants. Thanks so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun looking for edible plants with you. I'll see you next time with Nature Education with Metro. Bye!